councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. It is a big idea. A new world order. Almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancakes. Either you were with us or you were with the terrorists. Studios. It's Alex Jones. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, March the 4th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, the cashless society generation. Is Justin Bieber leading our children over a fiscal cliff? Plus, another child suspended. This time for shaping his pastry into a gun. Then, Dan Bedondi speaks with Hurricane Sandy victims about the aftermath five months later. And uh, did you lose power for how long? No, my daughter did in North Providence, Deborah. And what she did was she um, cooked in the kitchen. She barbecued. And I, she came upstairs and she says, Mommy, I cleaned the car and I have a sore back. So I said, well, put on the heating. Bad. She says, I have no electricity. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, there's more evidence today breaking that uh, there's an arms buildup by the Department of Homeland Security against American people. From the Gateway Pundit, Obama DHS purchases 2,700 light armored tanks to go with their 1.6 billion bullet stockpile. The Department of Homeland Security, through the U.S. Army Forces Command, recently retrofitted 2,717 of these mine-resistant protected vehicles for service on the streets of the United States. These are military vehicles to be used here domestically. And if you saw at the end of that uh, video on the uh, article there, it shows the flag placed there. It's a traditional placement that the uh, U.S. Army has put for cavalry flags uh, where they located on that vehicle. And it asks the question, I guess it begs the question, who are they going to war against? Well, they're going to war against the American people. They're repurp repurposing these vehicles for use domestically. These are vehicles that are resistant to mines. They have windows that will take a 50 caliber bullet. And if there's any question, just look at the uh, information that we broke here at InfoWars recently about the targets commissioned by the Department of Homeland Security. These are targets of old people, women, and children and they're merely holding guns. They're not pointing them in any kind of a threatening manner. They're merely possessing these arms. So that if you possess arms, whether you're an elderly person or a uh, pregnant female, or if you're a um, child, you are now a target of Homeland Security. And we see that because of another article here, uh, drones can detect if a citizen is armed. And this is from CNET, and they said, uh, Homeland Security specifications for its drones built by San Diego-based General Atomics Aeronautical Systems, say that they shall be capable of identifying a standing human being at night as likely armed or not. What that means is that at night, they're going to be able to determine whether you're carrying a shotgun or a rifle with these drones. They also specify signals interception technology that can capture communications in the frequency ranges used by mobile phones and direction finding technology that can identify the locations of mobile devices or two-way radios. 
And in the uh, article that we embedded when we put it in Infowars.com, there's also a flashback of the Department of Homeland Security using drones to spy on a couple of people who are perhaps uh, exchanging arms or doing a purchase that uh, maybe wasn't approved or registered with the Department of Homeland Security. But you can see two gun owners uh, out of the back of a truck of a car with rifles. So obviously we are their targets. So they're looking to see uh, who, they're looking to purchase drones to uh, see who has guns so they can make targets out of us. But I guess the question is, can a teacher determine the difference between a pastry and a gun? Well, evidently, they can't, not in uh, Brooklyn Park. We have a uh, Park Elementary School student, Josh, who was enjoying his breakfast pastry when he decided to try and shape it into a mountain. But the teacher thought it looked like a gun. So seven-year-old Josh Welch and his father say that that led to a two-day suspension for the second grader in Brooklyn Park. And I guess the question is, what if he did shape it into a gun? Why is that a crime? Why does that threaten anybody? Well, it doesn't, except that the government has to start conditioning children at an early age against gun ownership. And that's what that's all about. Now, to further indoctrinate the kids, we have a uh, new Justin Bieber-endorsed prepaid card that aims to teach kids about responsible spending. This month, Justin Bieber began marketing a prepaid card designed to promote responsible teen spending to his millions of fans. He'll take it to social media to spread his message about the Spend Smart MasterCard from a company called Bill My Parents Incorporated. Now, I guess that brings up a couple of questions. Uh, the Bill My Parents is kind of ironic that they're talking about financial responsibility for the kids when they say Bill My Parents, but uh, of course, there's not too many kids who have any disposable income nowadays. As Huffington Post reported last summer, children the age of, or young adults perhaps, uh, 16 to 19, the age of Justin Bieber had a 70% unemployment rate. So I guess you have to bill their parents if they're going to get anything themselves. But the other thing about this is that this card comes with a monthly fee, and uh, you have to pay every time you deposit money into it. There's a $1.50 charge. And so the question is, why would you do this? Well, it's all about telling parents and children that you don't want to use cash. Because if you use cash, the banks can't make money on every single transaction, and the government can't follow every single thing that you purchase. Well, with the gigantic Utah Data Center coming online later this year, where they've spent over $2 billion just for the initial infrastructure, and where they can store yottabytes of data. That's uh, a trillion terabytes. If you have a computer at home, you might have a one or two terabyte drive. This is a trillion of those. And that's so that they can record every bit of electronic communication from everyone throughout the world perpetually. So what do you do when you have all that information? Well, you need some way to mine that data. So DARPA has a uh, new program where they want a searchable base database of all your conversations. DARPA is working on an embryonic project that would store your every verbal conversation on an internet server, creating a searchable chat database that would represent the ultimate privacy killer. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this story is the way the technical press reports this. Wired Magazine, Popular Science, they always seem to take kind of a gee whiz approach to these Orwellian technologies that are being developed by scientists. Listen to the way Wired describes this. They said, DARPA wants to make a system so accurate that you'll be able to easily record, transcribe, and recall all the conversations you ever have, making it seem as if this is something that consumers want. I mean, don't you really want to know every conversation that you've had with people? Don't you really want a record of that? I don't think most people really do, but the government wants that. And then they also said in the same article, imagine living in a world where every utterance you make is preserved forever. Well, that's not really something that we want, but it has always been the dream of the police state, of tyrannical governments. And they want to turn our country into some kind of an Orwellian nightmare where everything that we say or do is recorded, and then they can mine it and determine, make transcripts of everything that we have said. Well, it's not just Homeland Security, though, that wants to know everything about you. Uh, Natural News and Mike Adams report that insurance companies and uh, are looking at grocery loyalty card purchases. They're being surveilled by insurance companies to raise rates and to deny claims. He said grocery store loyalty cards 
push you to enjoy discounts on groceries, and they're actually a behavior surveillance technology that's used to capture and profile your grocery purchasing patterns. This data is then sold off to insurance companies who use it to raise your rates by linking your grocery purchases with the risk of disease. Now, uh, they're also used, so they're using risk profiles and that sort of thing, but this comes as uh, this is something that uh, Mike Adams and Infowars have been warning about for quite some time, but he's reporting on a story that was broken by uh, Wall Street Journal in a, uh, the article titled, How the Insurer Knows You Just Stocked Up on Ice Cream and Beer. It opens with the paragraph, uh, the company already knows whether you've been taking your meds and getting your teeth cleaned. Now some employers and their insurance companies are tracking what staffers eat. So this is just something that's reported just like the uh, technical press reports uh, matter-of-factly about these uh, horrific projects that are being funded uh, by DARPA. The Wall Street Journal reports about these uh, uh, surveillance techniques uh, that the insurance companies are putting out there. And of course, the insurance companies were the ones who wrote Obamacare. And so they're going to mandate that you uh, buy these insurance policies at the, uh, uh, at the, with a gun pointed at your head, essentially. And then they're going to use what you eat and tracking everything you eat to assess risks to you and set your rates maybe to a higher rate. And also perhaps to deny your claims because they believe you've acted irresponsibly in what you've eaten. Well, the government loves to watch us, but who watches the government? Well, actually, that's our responsibility, ultimately. And we have someone here who takes that responsibility very seriously. After the break, we've got an interview with Carlos Miller. He's got a site called photographyisnotacrime.com, and he's going to talk about his fight and his struggle with the police in doing that. But before we do that, we've got uh, Dan Badandi talking to some survivors of Hurricane Sandy. This is Dan Badandi reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News. And today we're going to ask people, what did they do to prepare for Hurricane Sandy? Were you prepared for Hurricane Sandy? Not really. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mad food. Yes. Yes. No. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, not totally, but yeah. Oh, no, it kind of caught us off guard. I think we were fairly well prepared. Yes. Yeah, because I'm a native Rhode Islander, so we're always prepared. We get our bread and our milk and our generator, so we were all set. Yes. We thought we were as best as we could. Uh, did you experience long lines at the stores? No. Yes. And the stores were, uh, they were empty because of uh, so many people going to the store. But I know a lot of people that did have, uh, especially for the milk and the bread. Yes. Yeah, of course. That's how it always is. There's always the running out of milk and water and you name it. Yes, lots of long lines and lots of things were out like water and things of that nature. And batteries, no batteries. Did you lose power for how long? Yes, I lost power for two days. Almost two, two and a half days, three days. Two days. Seven days, six days? But well, we had a generator, so we were in good shape. Uh, I lost power for about four days. My daughter did in North Providence, Deborah, and what she did was she um, cooked in the kitchen. She barbecued, and I, she came upstairs, and she says, Mommy, I cleaned the car, and I have a sore back, so I said, well, put on the heating pad. She says, I have no electricity. Will you prepare yourself for the next disaster? Of course. No. Uh, yes. No. I will try. You bet I will. Preppers, the people on TV who prepare for uh, disasters and all that, what's your thoughts about them? Uh, I think it's kind of crazy because, you know, um, I just go by day by day, you know what I'm saying? When the storm comes, it comes. Well, they stock up on everything, and then when it comes, they're ready for it. They got the batteries, they got the candles, you know what I mean? So they're ready for it, and uh, it's New England. That's what happens around there. I think it's good because they need it. It's a good thing to, you know, prepare yourself for, um, well, you know, disasters. Uh, some people think it's crazy, but, you know, to each his own. Crazy people. I think they're crazy people. I don't think they're crazy, because, you know, if you didn't prepare, you know, God only knows what could happen. Uh, they go a little bit uh, long term. They're prepping for years. Uh, I think I prep for maybe a couple of days. They're great. They're awesome. I kind of wish uh, that we didn't have electricity anymore and we had wood stoves and we had things back in the way. I feel like they were more prepared for natural disasters a long time ago than we are now. I think we're kind of screwed with all the modernizations. And as you can see, a lot of people were prepared for Hurricane Sandy and a lot of people just didn't care. 
Rhode Island alone suffered millions of dollars of damage. People went days without power, and some people went a week without power. And still yet, our state hasn't even recovered from the hurricane. And this is not even talking about New Jersey or New York. And ask yourself, what are you going to do to prepare for the next disaster? Dan Bedondi reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News. That was a great report, Dan, and that reminds us of today's quote from Benjamin Franklin. He said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Very true, and something we should certainly think about when we look at what happened in the wake of Hurricane Sandy. People were left to prepare for themselves on their own. Well, right after the break, we've got an interview with Carlos Miller from PhotographyIsNotACrime.com. Jakari Jackson with an InfoWars bulletin. We have a new article at InfoWars.com headline, 3D printed lower receiver withstands more than 650 rounds. Defense Distributed's latest landmark gun part is a sturdy lower receiver capable of lasting more than 650 rounds as exhibited in the group's latest awesome video. According to the group, it has already been downloaded more than 10,000 times. Now remember the group's last AR-15 receiver only lasted six rounds, so this is a big improvement. Remember Defense Distributed also brought you the printable AR-15 gun magazine. Stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. And remember every membership paid is a war bond into the info war and funds our operation. I'm Jakari Jackson for InfoWars.com. No one out there who's paying attention could deny that our society is radically going in the wrong direction. We are transforming from a once free and vibrant republic into a horrible global corporate empire. And the American people are paying for this empire while at the same time not even getting the benefits of it. This empire is eugenics based and is a scientific system of control. And that's the globalists in their own words. And that's why I've made films like Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement. That's why I've uh, written hundreds of articles myself and published thousands of others in the last 17 plus years on the subject of global governance and the mindset of those controlling the new world order. The time is very, very short if we are going to reverse the accelerated tyranny that's happening. Uh, what feeds it is the apathy and the spectator culture with the learned helplessness, the mass Stockholm syndrome, the normalcy bias, where more and more crazy things happen, but people have just gotten in a uh, position of accepting it. So the sky's the limit. And if you study history, that's the point where gradual decline hits a cliff and falls off the edge. And that's why here at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, we're throwing everything we've got at the globalist. The people are becoming more skeptical of the system. That's in all the major polls. And uh, more and more people around the world are resisting the globalist. The problem is the globalists have seized control of the fractional reserve banking systems. And so they're able to issue unlimited fiat money to buy off politicians, police, bureaucracies, and the media. That's why it's more important than ever that the awakened masses really get aggressive in spreading the word about liberty and in exposing the globalist. But it is humbling, and that's why I came in on Sunday morning, uh, not just you know, Sunday evening with the Sunday radio show, to shoot a series of videos on several topics that we're going to be airing uh, throughout the week, uh, dealing with the fact that the gun confiscation has now begun. And it's happening via a cocktail of attacks that we're going to be breaking down. But it's serious, it's real, and, and it just shows how committed the globalists are to what they're doing. And, and, and how the Second Amendment is that beachhead of liberty, that's why they want to destroy it. I'm also going to break down more on what learned helplessness is, uh, and normalcy bias, and how people out there that think they're part of the system, or that think it's all a big joke that we're going into tyranny, uh, have no idea what's going to happen once the bottom finally finally falls out. It is the ghost of liberty and due process that still allows you uh, to operate, uh, some of you, in some comfort uh, in this republic. 
The subject that really hits me at my core, because I have empathy for children, I have empathy for babies, anybody who's not a complete psychopath does, to know that they're starting forced inoculations all over the country uh, by stealth and through uh, programs where the children don't get consent from their parents, and, and the government claims the children uh, have given the consent. Uh, and to know that it's now over 112 vaccines they're trying to give children uh, by age by age two, that that is basically a, a, a long-term, debilitative, uh, soft-kill, binary weapon attack, and to have all the globalist publications where they brag about it, and to watch the cancer and the diabetes and the Hodgkins and the uh, all the different degenerative early onset of neurological disorders, Guillain-Barre, Alzheimer's, I mean, just dozens and dozens of plagues, uh, the arthritis because of the autoimmune responses, uh, it's just nightmarish to see that they've gotten us to the point of where they can just test all of this on us. Uh, and like we're animals and they're some type of you know, biologist studying us or, or, or animal behaviorist, test the inputs they're engaged in and manipulate us. It's the ultimate power trip for the scientific technocrats to, to sit back and play God. But when you study them themselves, they have some of the highest instances of mental illness, some of the highest instances of criminal activity, some of the highest instances of all sorts of social problems. A lot of them end up in mental institutions. And you realize a lot of highly intelligent, but really screwed up, ritually abused, generationally abused people are in control. Uh, and they just can't help themselves with the different types of social engineering they're involved in. And I want people to understand things are going to get worse very, very quickly as we go down this road. And that's why we've launched the films, the nightly news, the radio show, all of it. Uh, but in this age of globalist censorship and moving towards the new internet where things are censored, it's important to also uh, be involved in as much uh, physical media as you can, like actual print. And this is our seventh issue uh, that we've put out, and I've got to say the graphics team, the writers, the entire InfoWars crew, uh, this is the best job they've done. They just get progressively better, but this is an entire leap forward uh, compared to what was already uh, very, very good and then excellent. Uh, it's now a extremely powerful. Uh, the way they took articles that I wrote, Paul Watson wrote, Kurt Nemo wrote, and so many others, and put graphics and uh, illustration to it is extremely powerful. Uh, and to buy these in bulk at cost, you can buy them in groups of 10 up to 100 at InfoWarsStore.com and get them out to people because you may know what's going on. I may have a pretty good grasp on what's happening and going on and, and a, a better grasp on what's happening every day as things become more and more obvious. The general public says that they don't trust Congress, very low approval ratings, says they don't trust the system, but still they don't understand that this is a life and death situation. This new magazine, 60 pages of color illustration, uh, is a lifeboat in a sea of lies and propaganda. And finally, if you want a free digital copy of InfoWars magazine sent to your inbox every month, absolutely free, go to InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter and put your email in there and we will send you at the start of every month a free e-copy. And in case you miss it, we send it to you a couple more times uh, in some of the news blasts that we send out once a week. So again, if you want to get InfoWars magazine, the seventh issue, absolutely free, go to InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter, put in your email and we'll send it to you. If you have friends and family uh, that you want to get it, you can also then take the email that we send to you with the digital copy where you can flip through it, click on the links, uh, it's digitally enhanced, then you can take that and send it on to your friends and family. In the magazine, we break down the globalist master plan to try to artificially start a civil war in America ahead of the state's rights movement and constitution institutionalist and Tea Party people getting together and restoring the republic. The globalists that have come in here and taken over the government, the foreign megabanks that are occupying us, this is all broken down in four different articles in the magazine, they want to start a civil war but call it terrorism when they push people up against the wall and they fight back. Or the system will stage false flags like Oklahoma City as they did in the past and Fast and Furious, Gulf of Tonkin, 9-11 and so many others 
as a pretext to come in uh, and again clamp down on things before the major political explosion takes place peacefully and restores our country. The globalists know they're all going to go to jail if they don't fully take over. That's why they're so dangerous. It's not business as usual anymore. Their Ponzi scheme is coming to an end. They're either going to go to prison for what they've done or they're going to take over and put people that know that they're the criminals in prison. That's why the system wants to start the Civil War. And that's why we break down why the states must secede to save America by Paul Joseph Watson. And it ties into my breakdown of the plan to secede to re-upload the republic. The federal government's already been captured. So how do the states restore America? Don't secede to get rid of America. Secede to rebuild America. The republic has already fallen. Only admitting that will allow us to ever have the phoenix rise. And then, of course, there's the major cover story, Civil War II. Why the banking elite wants riots in America. It breaks it all down. National Defense Authorization Act, Obama's war on whistleblowers, spying on social media for signs of unrest, building huge spy centers to track unrest in the American people illegally, preparing drones for domestic oppression, characterizing the American people as the new target of the war on terror, preparing for martial law, and so much more. This article is in-depth, and again, the graphics are incredible. You give this to friends and family, they're going to read it. Then we break down how California has introduced bills that look like they're about to pass, where all semi-autos are physically banned and you have to turn them in. New York is indicting and arresting veterans with no criminal records who are caught with magazines above seven rounds. And there's five other states that are on the verge, as we speak, as we tape this, of passing it as well, and other 10 states that have introduced it. And finally, on the Second Amendment, as you notice, they're not just getting rid of the Second Amendment right now, they're getting rid of the entire Bill of Rights. Our shield, due process, the dam, the moat that protects us from all the tyranny that wants to flood in. We've been contacted by hundreds of different publishers, most of which are already putting out a weekly or even daily newspaper or magazine wanting to start syndicating InfoWars magazine. Uh, we're not quite ready for that yet, but, but, but very, very soon we'll be contacting you and uh, you know, trying to formalize a system so that it can have your local content with our international and national uh, content to resist tyranny in it and to light brush fires in the minds of men and women. But we've had so many listeners contact us and say, hey, I want a monthly subscription to get 10 or 50 or 100, and I want to get one of those InfoWars stands so I can sell them for a dollar or two a piece in my store or business to make the money back to be able to keep doing it. And so, so many times your ideas uh, in this big brainstorming session we're all involved in together become a reality. So if folks go to InfoWarsShop.com, you can get an InfoWars magazine stand uh, and the magazines in groups of up to a hundred uh, at cost so that you can sell them or give them away in your business. We're following the footsteps of the founders of this constitutional republic who had hundreds of little printing presses in every colony getting out basic information about the tyrants and explaining what really happened to challenge the uh, royal establishment owned newspapers. InfoWars magazine is more than just our answer to the internet kill switch. We're also going back to the roots of this country. When our founders, for a decade before 1776, known as the pamphleteers, with hundreds of little printing presses in every colony, got out the real news, the real information, and countered the system. This is tailored, designed with the truth to wake up your friends and family. This is the 21st century version of the pamphleteers. So get them at InfoWarsShop.com or InfoWarsStore.com. Sign up and buy them in bulk. Sign up and be a micro distributor uh, for a full year to buy them in bulk and get one of the newsstands added, or sign up and get 12 issues delivered to your door or give a gift subscription. Whatever you do, be part of the fight, and I want to salute and thank all of you that are subscribers and are getting the magazine in bulk or who have ever come to InfoWarsStore.com and bought any of our products because we are supported by patriots and liberty lovers like you. We couldn't do it without you. So when you sign up to become a yearly micro distributor, we will get you the stand and the magazines monthly at cost. I'm David Ortiz for an Infowars.com bulletin. 
Well, the Republican Party is showing why they are on the verge of extinction. Recently, Republican Governor Chris Christie out of New Jersey and Republican Governor Scott Walker out of Wisconsin decided to opt in to President Obama's Obamacare plan. When asked why they decided to do it, Governor Christie said, quote, it's the smart thing to do for our fiscal and public health. And Governor Walker said, I did it because we've got to remain relevant as a party. Well, if these two individuals wanted the Republican Party to remain relevant, they would have to do this crazy thing called act like conservatives. That's why the Republican Party is on the verge of extinction. Later on, uh, Governor Christie said, quote, let me be clear. I am no fan of the Affordable Care Act. I think it's wrong for New Jersey and for America. I fought against it and believe in the long run it will not achieve what it it will not achieve what it promises. However, it is now the law of the land. Well, another law of the land, governor, is the Tenth Amendment, where you can nullify what whatever the federal government is trying to propose. Now, uh, there are now about seven Republican-controlled uh, states that have opted into this program. You can expect more states to opt in in the near future and there's about 25 states nationwide that have opted in to Obamacare and just to give you an update on what Obamacare really is doing and what socialized medicine is doing to our country according to boston.com over the past over the past year insurance premiums in Massachusetts have increased by an estimated 10% and according to an article posted by Mike Adams on Infowars.com, the IRS says that Obamacare will cost the average American family an estimated $20,000 per year. Not very affordable. If you want to continue to support our broadcast, remember to become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. For less than $6 a month, you can get access to some great media content, and you can share your username and password with up to 10 different individuals. Well, the founders knew that the government would come after our right to keep and bear arms gradually. That's why they talk about infringement. But there's another kind of shooting that's being infringed against, and that's the kind of shooting where we film the police in public. Now, even though the courts have said it is not a crime, the police would like for it to be. But we have someone here who stands up to that, and actually he's got a blog site, photographyisnotacrime.com. Born out of his own experiences, we have Carlos Miller. Well, welcome to the show, Carlos. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for everything that you're doing to uh, keep our rights to photograph in public out there. I want to talk about what happened in uh, Miami with you, and I also want to talk about photography and the police in general. But uh, first, I want to talk about the article that you had uh, uh, recently on Infowars about uh, this child in uh, my actually going to uh, Orlando uh, and the TSA and how the TSA was telling the parents that they didn't have a right to film. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, for at least for several years, you know, TSA has on their website since 2009, they have very, they made it very clear on their own website that photography and videography is allowed at checkpoints. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they ask that you don't record the, the screens or the monitors. Most people who are recording are not, monitor, are not recording the monitors. They're recording their family members getting frisked or going through their little um, uh, metal detectors or whatever they're going through. And they're always... I mean, you know, I would say 80% of the time, the TSA screeners will tell the passenger that they have no right to record. That is against the law. It's against the airport policy, against their own policy. You know, they make up these rules and these laws, and it's not true. Right. And, and, you know, unfortunately, there's a, a high number of passengers who don't know. They get intimidated. And well, the screeners, the screeners are telling them something different than what the TSA has on its own website. I right. think that's the key right. thing. Yeah. yeah so, so there's either some kind of miscommunication, either they're not getting trained properly or they are getting trained properly, but they're just deciding they're not going to abide by their actual policy. And then what happens is you're getting a passenger who's going through these monitors and they have a plane to catch. You know, you don't really have a whole lot of time to sit there and argue. Mm -hmm. And even though if you are right, you know, they will call the cops and the cops and sometimes the cops might know the law. A lot of times they don't know the law. And then you have to deal with the cops. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, you're, you're going to miss your flight. So, you know, most of the time people just say, okay, screw it. You know, I'll put the camera away. And they win. And exactly. What happens is that, you know, we've had a high number of thefts already. I mean, that's documented for, by, by TSA members. We've had, you know, just a, a numerous amount of complaints where, where TSA screeners are getting too frisky when they're 
feeling us up and down. You know, they're getting a little bit too intimate. Mm -hmm. And these are people, we, we're not suspected of a crime. You know, we're just walking into trying to fly on an airplane. Well, and, and this whole opt out and film campaign that we had uh, last uh, Thanksgiving uh, that was started by a young lady who uh, was really getting uh, brushed around pretty roughly by the TSA and her brother started filming and everything completely changed once that was being recorded. I mean, it's really important. You know, the age old question is, who watches the watchers? Right. Well, you know, we have to watch the watchers, you and I and ev all the public. And if we don't stand up for that right, and if we allow them to say that they can film us 24 seven, everywhere we go, record everything that we do in our life, which is what they're doing right now. Yeah. Uh, they've completely turned everything upside down, saying that they can record everything about our life, everything we say or do electronically, uh, but we cannot record them in public doing their job as quote unquote public servants. But she noticed that that really changed their behavior and that's why we had the opt out and film campaign. But when I traveled uh, at Thanksgiving, I was told that I wasn't allowed to uh, videotape them. So was David Ortiz. Um, I insisted and I got, I got a very different uh, response uh, from the two different places here in Austin. Uh, that first they, they told me I couldn't do it. I carried with them with me a uh, printout from their website showing that could be done. I argued with them and they were real cooperative. They even set up my, cause I was traveling alone by myself. So I had an iPad and they actually set it up. But when I did it in Charlotte, I really had a fight with them in Charlotte. I had to go all the way uh, through the uh, line manager that was there up to the manager who was uh, over the uh, uh, over that whole area. And then they sent another screener down. I had to do it inside of a, uh, uh, a booth, that sort of thing. So uh, that's that, cause they're paranoid, I guess, about uh, anything being filmed, but they really got angry when I said I wanted to film it. And that's what we saw in this this clip with the young, young girl in the wheelchair. Right. And then you have a young girl who, who I mean, I think she was two or three years old and, and you know, and they're basically insisting on frisking her and she's crying and she's raising a big fuss. She doesn't want to go to Disney World. That's what she's quoted as saying. Right. And what three year old child is going to say, I don't want to go to Disney World unless they're terrified. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we've done. We've we've turned we got these people we don't train them properly, and they're not really doing a really eff a very effective job on keeping our airlines secure. Mm -hmm. and, and we're just harassing citizens. We're we're making them feel violated, and, and we're basically not only we're violating the Fourth Amendment rights by frisking them, we're actually violating the First Amendment rights by telling them you're not allowed to record while we're recording you, and right. we're not allowed, while they're recording us. And they're keeping, you know, they have these see-through scanners now where it just came out not too long ago, where they're actually keeping all those photos on file. Yeah. Well, a lot of us believe that it's, uh, it's actually conditioning training for us, you know, mm -hmm. to take away our human. It's not just violating our legal rights, but it's violating our humanity, our dignity, as well as our freedom. I thought it was real interesting when the mother said, uh, I find it very ominous that you feel you have to do this in the dark, you know, that you don't want somebody filming that. I mean, that, that was, she just said that off the top of her head, came right out of her heart, and that's exactly what's going on with this. But tell us a little bit about what happened in Miami uh, on the train station to you. And I'd like to know where that case is right now, but tell us a little bit about what happened yeah. there. Well, I've had this ongoing battle with the uh, Metro Dade security guards. There is a company called 50 States, a private company, and they're contract, contracted, contracted out by the county. And it's a big, big deal. It's a multi-million dollar contract. And they're guarding all these train stations in Miami, and two, it was in 2010, I was assaulted by going onto the Metro station with my camera rolling. There was a news crew recording that, and they're trying to convince us that it's not legal to record on the train stations. Although I had a printout of the law, the county code says you are allowed to record on the train stations as long as you're not doing it for commercial purposes. Commercial purposes means advertising, mm -hmm. you know, and that's because you know they want to cut out of it. You have to get a permit, and then you can do it. But if you're doing it for editorial purposes, news purposes, if you're doing it for taking just tourist snapshots with your friends and family, if you're doing it just to post a photo up on Facebook because you like trains, that's, you don't need a permit for that. And you don't need to be harassed. And what happened was I was there with a buddy who came in from L.A. We were taking pictures of the Miami Dade Courthouse, which is a very historical building. And they, a voice came out of the loudspeaker and they said, no photos allowed. I started video recording with my iPhone, knowing how these people are and <laughs> expecting them to come out. And they came out and the first guy goes, well, you're not allowed to photograph the tracks. Well, first of all, we were not recording the tracks, but second of all, it is not illegal to record the tracks. So I'm not gonna just basically bow down to him and say, okay, yes, sir, I won't photograph the tracks. 
one, I know I have every right to photograph the tracks. Not that it's very interesting, but, but you know, he was trying to enforce some unlawful order on me. And when I questioned him, I go, well, what law are you talking about? He goes, well, you got to get out. If, you're not, if you don't stop recording, you have to get out. And it just one thing led to the other. And then he realized I wasn't really buying into his little unlawful order. So he says, well, you've been drinking, haven't you? And I had a couple of vodkas. You know, I, was dri- I, was not, I wasn't even driving, so I was riding the train home. And he goes, well, you have to leave because you've been drinking. And there's no law about that either. There's no law that says, well, if you've been drinking alcohol, you're not allowed on a train. Mm-hmm. So that's stupid. And, and then when I basically stood my ground, I said, look, I'm going when the train comes. I paid my fare. Yeah, I'm here legally. I'm not breaking any law. I, I just want to go home. No, you're not getting on the train. Then they had two other guards. So it was a total of three guards basically grab me and escort me down to the escalator. And when I'm going down the escalator, I'm walking at that point because I know it's going to get very aggressive. They try to push me down the escalator. So I'll fall head first all the way down the escalator. That's when I responded. I turned around and said, guys, you know, don't do that. I basically lifted a fist at them. Then they pounced on me. They had, they had been a show cold. And my friend who was trying to video record, they knocked the camera from his hand. No. He picked up the camera. By the time he picked the camera up again, I was down on the bottom of the escalator. They had him in a show cold. They were suffocating me. They had one guy putting his arm all the way up here, and another guy putting, pushing my head down. I couldn't breathe, and I was holding with my left arm, just holding my body up so they wouldn't really smash it against the escalator. They were so aggressive. And these guys are all armed. Mm-hmm. And, and then they called the cops. They handcuffed me and my buddy because then they saw my buddy recording, so they go, you're going to jail too. So he gets handcuffed for video recording. The cops come, and these cops all know who I am. They all go, yeah, there's Carlos Miller, because I've had numerous run-ins with these cops, all because of cameras, nothing illegal. I mean, I, I haven't been convicted of anything, mm-hmm. and, but they all know who I am, and they don't like me because I make them look stupid. You know? <laughs> That's the truth. But they make themselves look stupid, and they made themselves look stupid again here. Right. So the cops back them up. With no, with no, they didn't witness anything, but they say, well, we're going to cite you. We're going to give you a hundred dollar citation because you made excessive noise on the metro rail. When well, that was never the issue, we were taking pictures. We were making noise, right? And, and so we we're fighting that. And so basically, we we filed a new lawsuit. We had a, an existing lawsuit at the state level because of the 2010 incident. There's actually a few incidents in 2010, and we escalated that. We basically we we took that. We just basically dismissed that one and. And we filed a new one on the federal level. This one includes um, constitutional violation. My civil rights violations is a 1983 is what they call it. And it includes not only the assault and battery, then the false imprisonment because they handcuffed us, but it includes, includes, you know, the way they just uh, physically abuse me and violate our civil rights, which we have the right to ride a train, a tax funded train without getting beat up because just because we took pictures. Yeah, and and we have already deposed their top guy at the uh, fifty state security, and he we deposed him before the incident, and he said, no, under no circumstances can our security guards use force on you. Only uh, the only exceptions is if you if they are to have to defend themselves, if they have to defend another passenger from physical harm, or if we jump the fare, then they can push us out. If we pay entered without paying, then they can physically remove us. If we refuse to go, of course. Well, I sure hope you have some success in that. I know there's been a couple of uh, federal cases uh, back in uh, 2011. Uh, U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit in Boston upheld the right of people to videotape, and then as recently as this last November, we had the uh, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals had uh, ruled to block Illinois' laws against videotaping, and in November of 2012, the Supreme Court refused to hear an appeal of that, so they let that stand. So we've had two uh, uh, circuit courts uh, of appeals hold up the right of individuals to videotape this, and uh, as they should. Um, yeah. So, uh, and 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 in Illinois, it was a very draconian law. It was like 15 years imprisonment per incident. I mean, it was outrageous that case. So, uh, certainly, you should prevail. Yeah, but unfortunately, you know, we've had those court cases, those, that case law. But even I think it was last month, you had a woman in Illinois who was arrested for the same thing, mm-hmm. and those she won't be convicted, but she was still put in jail. And for wiretapping or eavesdropping is what they called it. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's not trickling down. Or it, even if it does trickle down, the cops say, we'll make the arrest. You might be able to beat the rap, but you can't beat the ride. 
Well, I think I think the problem is is that over and over again we're seeing that uh, the law is pretty obvious, and we have uh, people who are in government at various levels who basically just disregard the law. You know, yeah. they they disregard. It's interesting to me that the TSA totally disregards our Fourth Amendment protections, but then on their website they say, oh. We understand that you have First Amendment rights, and we're going to support those. I mean, it's really kind of crazy. And I think the only reason they did that was because of these court decisions. I mean, they could not put on their website uh, saying that you cannot uh, videotape them when they've already had federal courts uphold the right to videotape. So they've just basically covered themselves on their website and then let their screeners uh, proceed to uh, violate your rights and prey on people's ignorance. And as you said, their, their uh, need to uh, get going under a regular schedule because it takes a long time to fight this out with uh, them. And you always run the risk of uh, somebody, you know, standing their ground and escalating this and arresting you on some false pretenses as they did at the uh, Miami uh, train station with you. Yeah, and you know, and speaking of websites, we had uh, a web uh, police department out of Oregon, the Gresham Police Department, and they're, you know, just outside of Portland. And in the last two last month, we've had two incidents where they basically assault and snatch cameras out of the hands of citizens, cause the recording. And on their website, they have the gall to say, "Yeah, we respect the rights of citizens. We respect the constitutional rights. We, you know." We're cool like that. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and then we see it on video and these stories I'm putting on blog where they have no respect for our constitutional rights. And right. this is a, you know, it's an ongoing battle. And and you have people who go, the camera gets taken away from them. You know, you, one lady who was arrested and you risk getting physically assaulted by these cops, men with guns and tasers and and these nightsticks. And, you know, and, and it's very intimidating when you stand up mm -hmm. to them. You know? I mean, mm -hmm. just because we have the legal right to do it doesn't mean we're not going to get punished and we won't pay the price for it. Because I'm still, for my, my, my metrial incident, I'm still healing from that. I mean, my yeah. my ankle's still sprained from that. My knee hurts. And, you know, and, and here we are, that's more than a month ago. Yeah. And yeah. why should we go through that? But we have to stand up for our rights because it only get worse if we don't. I, I heard a speech uh, from a fellow who had been at Tiananmen Square as a student, and he's now living in the United States. He said, all the constitutional protections that you have, with the exception of the Second Amendment, he said, we had protections about freedom of speech and all these wonderful things. But, of course, they totally ignored it. It was just there. It was just a piece of paper. And we're increasingly seeing that happen in the United States. But I really appreciate you standing up for it. Uh, Carlos, and uh, we want to continue to follow your court case. I think it's going to be pretty important. I think it's we have to fight this in the courts, and we have to continue to insist on our rights in person. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank and your you website know. is uh, photographyisnotacrime.com. If people can go there, follow the progress of your uh, of your case, and they'll find a lot of information there about. Uh, it's really kind of a clearinghouse for this particular uh, situation uh, yeah. all over the country. And I'm going to be introducing forums on a site where it's not just a blog, where because they have a lot of readers who have a lot of experiences and have a lot of things to say, have a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of smart people on the blog, so we're going to have these forums where people can talk about these issues. We're going to have you know basically technology reviews. We're going to start reviewing dash cams, and we're going to expand the site to include make it more of an interactive community. And hopefully by next week we'll have that up. Good for you. Good for you. We need to do this at the grassroots level. Thank you so much for your efforts. Okay. But well, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, it's great that he's got a way for people to organize and network together to fight tyranny. Uh, of course, we also provide a way to do that on Planet Info Wars. Uh, you can, we've had people who have done that with fluoride back in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. They got together to fight that. Uh, you can get together for any kind of cause. Upload your videos, show uh, where the police are uh, doing something that perhaps they shouldn't be doing. Link to it on Planet Info Wars and reach out and connect with other people. It's real important to do that, whether you do that on uh, Planet Info Wars or whether you do it on photographyisnotacrime.com. Uh, it's always important to get with other people and stand up. Do not let your rights be taken without doing anything. And if you want to support our operation, go to prisonplanet.tv. There you can get a subscription. You can share that with up to 10 people, can view simultaneously. Uh, of course, you can share it with more people than that. It's a way to support our operation, and it's a way to get the news immediately instead of waiting a day for it to come out on YouTube. Well, thanks for turning, tuning in, and we'll be back tomorrow night at uh, 7 o'clock Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.